I have a question. Who here likes Legos? Well, I have to admit, I really dislike Legos. We all know those simple structures from which we used to build things like a house, a car, maybe even a Star Wars ship, although I would never be skilled enough to build this. <laughs> These simple structures have limited our mental schemas of what buildings in today's society should look like. Now, Legos have been produced since 1932, so that's more than 86 years of plain quadrilateral pieces which should inspire children, yet they set a boundary to our imagination. Well, enough about Legos for now. As a child, I quickly grew aware of the architectural nightmares around me, yet nature provided the ability for a creative mindset. The trees I saw were obviously monsters, and the cloud in the sky was a pegasus which swiftly flew through a field of fluffy white cotton candy. Our environment, however, is changing drastically, with an increase in natural disasters as seen by Cyclone Adai and Kenneth in Mozambique, with a death toll of over a thousand people, or Hurricane Irma in Florida, which I thankfully survived. As we accept and acknowledge these changes, we should not only psychologically assimilate to the problems, but change the way we build and design. But how do we change the way we build and design? Firstly, by not looking at future buildings as Legos, rather embracing the creative shapes and surroundings. Now, this can be achieved by incorporating biomimicry, which simply means to mimic nature. We spend centuries building boring, mundane shoeboxes in every city, rather than looking at the prime shapes in nature, which are round or oval. The architecture and infrastructure of today should mirror nature in order to ensure survival and to enrich our culture. Now, I have a quick demonstration to show you. So, this is a rock, and it has a rounded shape. And if a mechanical force of water would um, move around this rock, it's going to move easily, whereas this is a house made out of Legos. I'm not the best at building Lego structures, as you know. And if the same force of water would move across this Lego house, it would first hit the wall. And if this can be applied to a strong current of water, this would damage the home. So if this is a real house and a flood or a strong tsunami would come, that wall would crash. Now, the reason why this happens is because any mechanical current, whether it is a current of air or water, it can easily move around more natural, rounded shapes. Now, picture the ocean and beach here in Cape Town and visualize the rocks in the ocean and how they all have a more spherical or rounded shape. And if a strong current of water approaches, the, the water can easily move around that rock. Whereas if this rectangle were that rock, the water would first hit the wall and then proceed to move around. So, there are only a few round homes today in society, as most of the world is speckled with plain, four-sided shapes. But there are many benefits of incorporating biomimicry, as shown in the demonstration. No organism or uh, structure in our natural world is perfectly symmetrical or square, and this might be the reason why the natural world has thrived for millions of years despite heavy rains and earthquakes. But firstly, I have to admit, there are some benefits of building um, Lego houses, such as maximized space and floors which can be easily added or stacked on top of one another. However, more importantly, there are many benefits of building rounded structures, and here are a few. They are resistant to factors including strong winds and earthquakes, and are more stable in response to such forces. Due to their spherical shape, the mechanical forces can easily move around the shape. Now, they also have te temperature control and a natural air ventilation system, which is much better for the environment. As we all know that air conditioning can be expensive and contributes to our greenhouse gases. There are also better acoustics in these buildings, as the sound waves can easily bounce off the rounded walls. But there is one major advantage, which is cost efficiency. According to the University of Nebraska, when building a spherical home, there is less surface area or unused space. 
Now, this means that there are fewer materials which need to be utilized, and when composing such a building, it costs less in comparison to a rectangular home. There is also a larger range of materials which can be used, ranging from different types of stones to woods. Now, due to these advantages, individuals on a global scale can build more affordable and functional homes. Now, there are some great examples of biomimicry in our society today, which embrace a more organic and natural silhouette. This baobab tree was the inspiration for a tree house, which has a quite sleek and natural design. It ties in the surroundings with the individual who inhabits the structure. Even the materials used create a sense of uniformity. Now, according to um, the Biomimicry Institute, as well as National Geographic, these termite mounds were the inspiration for a temperature control system in Harare, Zimbabwe. I just wanted to point out that that is a giraffe, and that is a termite mound in comparison. And last I remember, giraffes are quite tall, so that is really impressive. <laughs> and yes, I did say termites, these threatening insects, which pretty much eat anything they come across. Yet, they are incredible architects and inspired Mick Pierce. He was challenged to create a sustainable option for air conditioning and decided to adopt the termite mount ventilation system. But how does it work? Well, the Eastgate Center in Zimbabwe adopted such a framework, and fans during the night absorb the cool air and release the warm air through chimneys, which mimic the outlets of the termite mounds. So this is a really incredible design. Now, I have a question. Does anyone think this kingfisher is an inspiration for something that can affect someone's day-to-day -day life? <laughs> well, it is. We all know those super fast and really cool bullet trains in Japan and China. While the nose of the train is inspired by the great kingfisher, which has to quickly dive into the water when catching its prey. This was used in order to minimize the pantograph's noise when the train moves through the tunnel, as it is quite fast. Hundred thousands of years ago, our ancestors relied on the organisms and organic frameworks surrounding them as inspiration for their homes, ranging from the different style of mud huts across the African continent or the igloos in North America. They all embraced a common shape. But now it appears to be time when we reflect back on society and realize that to improve our planet, we need to alter the way we design and build. Creating such homes which embrace a more circular silhouette will not only allow for creativity, but serve practicality. It is inevitable that as our global climate changes, we will experience an influx in natural disasters as seen over the years. There will be more hurricanes, tsunamis, floods, and earthquakes, which we have to prepare and build for. Therefore, adopting such a design is very beneficial, it's cost efficient, and we will create a more natural disaster resistant building framework. So the cultures which initially adopted such a framework will be celebrated with new and more modern designs, which will maintain their valuable history. Therefore, when it comes to enhancing our physical world, let nature show us the way. If we invest in architecture and infrastructure now, we will thrive. If not, ourselves, including the organisms around us, will die. Therefore, we should leave the Legos in the past. Let's build nature. <laughs>